الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد ایو الاحباب کنٹینیو آن ان آر سٹڈی آف شر سننہ با ایمان با بحاری رحمہ اللہ تعالی احبتی فی اللہ وی ریچڈ the portion of the treaties, the 10th point, and I think we mentioned this in the, in the last dars, but I found some additional fawaid, and uh, of course we don't want to spend excessive time, but if we were to go through the many shuruhat, the many different explanations from the ulama, we would never be able to finish this, uh, this dars, because there's so many benefits uh, that I am... Uh, neglecting so to speak or not bringing fawaid from but we'll just try to bring some benefits so that way we did go through this very important book when we benefited some fawaid from the ulama of Ahl sunnah Imam Baba Hari said Rahimahullah Ta'ala Wa'alam Rahimakallah Annuhu La yutimmu al-Islam La yutimmu islamu abd Hatta yukun mutabi'an Musaddiqan Musliman so here, the treaties, or this point of Imam Babahari has been divided into two parts. In this first part, Imam Babahari said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, May Allah have mercy upon you. Know that a slave's uh, Islam is not complete until he is, follow, uh, till he is in strict obedience and, belie- and a believing Muslim. So these are sifat, or these are characteristics of the mu'min and the way he should be with regards to uh, his Islam, his Iman, believing in Allah. As, as the Prophet wasallam said in the Hadith of Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam, when Jibreel uh, alayhi salatu wasalam said to the Prophet wasallam, akhbirni an al-Iman, and the Prophet Sallallahu said, "In tu'mina billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa yawm al-akhir wa tu'mina bi qadri khayrihi wa shar." He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that uh, iman, it is believing in Allah, and his in tu'mina billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi, and believing in the angels and his books, and his messengers, and the uh, d- the day of judgment and the qadr the divine destiny the khair of it and the sharr of it the good and the evil of it those are the pillars of iman that is that's an obligation upon every muslim to believe in those pillars and if a muslim as the ulama said in the salaf have you 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 find these um, these statements referring to the ijma or referring to the consensus regarding the salaf or the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in with regards to this issue uh, of if a person does not believe in one pillar of iman then they is it is if they disbelieved in all of them because they're a disbeliever so a muslim or a person who claims they're a muslim and they don't believe in the qadr the divine destiny of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they say they outright flat deny that there is a qadr. Then this person is not a Muslim. We wouldn't even, you know, غير معتبر. They're not a Muslim. They don't have the the rights that a Muslim has uh, as a believer. And likewise, if a person were to deny that Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, was a prophet uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and, and a messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, and that he was sent and he did miracles and so forth. But if someone were to deny and, and, and even speak about, this is a point I want to uh, mention, a faida, because I remember this especially from uh, early days of giving dawah, that sometimes the people would get into debates with Christians and so forth with uh, regarding Islam and the, and the tenets of Islam or other groups like the Nation of Islam and, and other sects that are not Muslim <laughs> and they would sometimes fall into error by belittling not only what those people believe but belittling sometimes prophets 
So, for example, the Muslim who's in a debate with a Christian, and, and we should avoid these things anyhow, but you should give the people the truth, and, and that's sufficient because most of the people believe by based on their desires, their hoa, and it isn't necessarily based on evidence. Most people, but there are those people who uh, are influenced by logic based logical uh, arguments. But however, what happens is sometimes the brothers in their zeal would call the uh, Christians to Islam and because a Christian would say I don't believe in Muhammad they would say something like you know Jesus you know to belittle Jesus when Jesus alayhi salatu salam was a prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam we don't worship him he doesn't have divinity but we believe in him wholeheartedly and his message message and the books all the books of the prophets alayhim afdal salatu wasalam so we have to be cautious likewise another point which stems from this a little bit outside of our lesson but it's important to make ten b of is that we have to be careful also even of belittling for example if you're talking to a nation of islam person uh, from the nation and this is something we used to not do as well we used to be very aggressive with them and uh, you know some situations almost getting to uh, you know go into violence and threats and, and this is a well-known this happens around the world when dealing with this group and the point is that if you know someone believes in something wholeheartedly and this is a qaida from the from the shara that you should not uh, belittle even their their God, but you point out their uh, the shortcomings and and show you know based on logic and say how can you worship something that doesn't uh, that doesn't uh, you know can't respond to you or how do you worship something that is that sleeps and dies as you claim or what what have you but you have to be cautious and the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated this qaida is because and as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said as well that when you curse their uh their belief system then they will curse your belief system, and, it, and, and then it can be as if you cursed Islam. So, for example, if you get in a discussion with a nation, and you're dealing, uh, talking about uh, their leader um, Elijah Muhammad or whoever, then there's a a, a a much more logical way to approach this because if you insult their leader, not only you better be prepared to deal with the consequences. But number two is that that may possibly lead them to insult the Prophet ﷺ. Then you've brought that harm onto Islam. You've brought that or may cause someone to curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they don't know who Allah is. So then by insulting their what they believe, if you insult, for example, the Buddhists that believe in the Gohanzin, they chant to this. If you insult their Gohans, and then it's very easy for them to say, well, your God or Allah is this, or what have you. And this, this is, uh, happens uh, regularly. So this is something I've learned, of course, through my studies, most importantly, but also in my experience, that you should be very careful with these issues. So going back to what Imam Baba Hari said, Rahimallah Ta'ala, is that it's from our Iman and it's from our Islam that the slave uh, is, is following uh, the, the uh, Kitab wa Sunnah, you know, that we follow the Nusus, and that we believe, we're a believing Muslim, that we believe in, in those Nusus that don't seem like they conform to our intellect. This is where we differ with the Asha'ira and the Maturidiyah and many of those other Aqlaniyun, those other groups that are based upon, based a lot of their, their faith upon their intellect what their limited intellect understands from the Nasus, or even outside the Nasus. So this is where Ahl Sunnah differs, is that we take from the text and we suffice with the text. This is going to be the distinguishing characteristic of the Mu'min. And that's why Imam Baba Hari made this ishara to that. And also, Imam Baba Hari, rahimahullah ta'ala, so... <coughs> He encouraged to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and emphasized that the deen is complete. 
وَهَذَا الدِّينِ يَكُومُ عَلَى اعْتِبَاءٍ وَتَسْلِيمٍ وَالْإِنْقِيَادِ Very important that this religion, it is established upon اتِبَاءٍ following following who the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam his Sunnah following Allah to wa Taala his commands وَرَسُولُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَأَتِيُ اللَّهُ وَأَتِيُ الرَّسُولُ as the Prophet as Allah subhanahu wa taala says all throughout the Quran follow Allah obey Allah and obey the Messenger. And what taslim? Taslim meaning that we have uh, comfort with the nusus. We suffice with the text. Well, in qiyad, and that we adhere to it firmly. Another faida related to this is the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Fi kitabi al kareem fala wa rabbaka." فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِيمَا شَجِرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُ تَجِدُ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا ثُمَّ لَا ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَدَيْتْ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا And this is also relates to us the point that we mention about will you sallim taslima that sufficing and finding comfort with the the text and the meaning of the ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says but no by your lord so it, it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by himself or giving this argument to the prophet alayhi salatu salam by your lord they can have no faith until they make you meaning the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam a judge in all disputes between them and enough is hell for burning them uh, or uh, uh, the judge in all disputes between them and finding themselves no resistance against your decisions and accept them with full submission. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to obey the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and use him as a arbitrator. How do we arbitrate with the Sunnah sallallahu alayhi wasallam now? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam died alayhi salatu wasallam. So how do we arbitrate? We arbitrate with his Sunnah. We go back to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al Khulafa al Rashidin al Mahdiin. It's upon you my Sunnah and the Sunnah of the Khulafa al Rashidin, the rightly guided Khalifat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fin tanazatum fi shayin, furadu illallahi wa rasuli in kuntum tu'minu billahi wa liyum la akhir. ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَأَحْسَنُ تَعْوِيلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَإِنْ تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرَدُوا وَلَى اللَّهِ That if you disagree over something and this is how we need to come back with all our differences you disagree how many disagreements do we have with many of our brothers and I'm talking about between Ahl Sunnah unfortunately not even talking about Ahl Bid'ah this is before we even get to Ahl Bid'ah but how many things maybe people are in the same madhab the same minhaj Following Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but they differ about the tibdi or the uh, the innovation of one person. They, this person says, "No, he's an innovator, and if you listen to his tape or da 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 da, you are an innovator. I give you no salams." The other person says, "No, I believe that he is not an innovator. I don't see the dalil in the same way you do. You know, as long as this isn't based on hawa." And because of this, unfortunately, the youth, they have enmity between themselves and, and between one another. But if we come back to the text, <coughs> that if you disagree over something, return it to Allah and His Messenger. Uh, so if you truly believe in Allah, in the day of judgment. So if you truly believe, you believe in that iman that we talked about, those pillars of iman, then that's what you'll do. You'll go back to the nusus. You'll go back to the dalil, the text, kitab ilah wa sunnah to rasul sallallahu alayhi wa and the understanding of the salaf of this ummah. Uh, then, in another ayat, that was addressed to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabi al-kareem. 
قل إن كنتم إن قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم. الله سبحانه وتعالى says to the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام he said say إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني that if you truly love Allah this is the test if someone says they love you for the sake of Allah or they love they say they love Allah سبحانه وتعالى إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله then follow me this is what Allah سبحانه وتعالى gave this argument to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to give tablik to the people tell the people that if you truly love uh, love Allah then you'll follow me, who the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, letting us know that's further delil, that the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is what we have to follow. That's what this religion is about. So, uh, then, يُحْبِبَكُمُ Allah, And Allah will love you. So if you love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you're following his sunnah, sahih. I'm not saying just lip service, I'm not saying just your dress, you have the beard, your, your thobe is short, whatever. Things that we do, because we all have our shortcomings, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Kul ibn Adam khatta All the children of Adam make mistakes, and the best of those is those who repent. So the point is, following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, truly, for the sake of Allah ﷻ, this is how you gain the love of Allah. That's one of the things we get from this ayat. If you want Allah to love you, follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. You cannot do innovative practice. You can't celebrate the Prophet ﷺ's birthday. You can't uh, turn off all the lights and, and sit in a gathering and you all make dhikr and say Allahu, Allahu, Allahu a thousand times or a hundred times. You know, what, whatever practices that the Prophet ﷺ didn't do that some of these people have uh, tried to bring into the religion. You can't do those things and think you're going to have the love of Allah and you're going to draw near to Allah. You draw near to the law. One of the ways of you have to wassel is by the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Following his sunnah to us will be good deeds. And what, how do good deeds get accepted? What is the qaida? How do we get our good deeds accepted? Uh, ikhlas wa mutaba. That we have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we follow the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. قال ابن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه اتبعوا ولا تبتدعوا فقد كفيتم A beautiful author of Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه And he said Follow and do not innovate And that will suffice you Or what, what has been revealed is sufficient for you so if we follow what has already been revealed, no matter how many people that have a modern inclination, a modern day, uh, they're affected by modern ideologies, and no doubt all of us have some sort of effect. We live in the 21st century. We can't help but be affected by the political ideologies and so forth, but we have to harness ourselves and come back to those principles. Kitab Allah wa sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, believing that that is the way to success. Believing that those other ideologies are not going to save us. They're not going to get us, uh, save us from the hellfire and get us into the paradise. But instead, we look to our surroundings and see how these new issues, how new Messiah, how new things that happen, how it, how it uh conforms or how the Sharia uh, restricts those uh, those things or, or what's permissible for us and what's not permissible by going back to Kitab wa Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf and also the other Qaeda which is what? Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. So we go back to the ulama. This is the, the beauty and the benefit of going back to the scholars because there's so much we don't know. A person can study for 10, 20 years but still I mean, if Allah has favored them to be from the ulama, that's different. But even then, it's not like the major scholars. So sc scholars have different levels. There are some scholars that are powerhouse and are very young. But even with their youth and their strength, and you see that they're on the khutwa to be from the major scholars, they're not like those major ulama uh, for example, in this time, some that passed probably in the past 10 years, like Bin Baz, Al Albani, uh, uh, Bin Uthimin, Sheikh Mukbil, uh, Rahimahumullah Jami, and, 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 and many others aside from them. 
many others that I haven't mentioned. Just even recently, uh, you know, Sheikh Ahmed Al Najmi, Sheikh Zayd Al Medkhali, and and Kathir. There's so many Sheikh uh, Ghudayan. Uh, uh, and, and Kathir and before them even giants in knowledge their ulama what about their ulama so the point being is going back to those people those people of knowledge to help you to practice Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and understand these issues new issues that we're going to continually encounter time has changed it's very different the laptop the 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 tablets the you know what have you the forms of transportation what have you but how do we deal with that in accordance with the principles we have principles and foundation to stand upon that will help us to deal with those new issues so it doesn't the sharia only limits you in the in respect to keeping you away from that which is going to be harmful and it shows you how to use those new things in a beneficial way. This is the way Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Wasallam. It's not something that hampers you. Don't think that it hampers you. And this is how a lot of the people think. And then they look down on the Sharia. And this is from Muslims I'm talking about. And may Allah protect us uh, from misguidance. And we'll continue after the Salat with the next portion uh, of this point. And we'll be as brief as we can. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم